Hello, Mr. Lizzie. In your view, is the fact that Premier Cuyar is willing to potentially accept Mr. Slavunos back into his caucus pending this statement he's expected to make another example of a lack of ethical or moral judgment? You know, these are tough calls. But I think in 2017, when we have a heightened uh, conscience of uh, uh, marginalizing any, uh, any uh, behavior that is demeaning to women, and we've gone through many cases very public in the last few years, I think the level of tolerance should be very, very low. Uh, Mr. Slavunas uh, may uh, be contrite. He may change his uh, habits. But the question here is not, can he rehabilitate himself in a big enterprise or in civil life? It is, is he fit to be a representative of the population in the caucus of an important party? My answer to that is no. Uh, he failed that test. Uh, he can go on to be a great lawyer and have a great career. But as a political representative of the, conscious, the conscience of Quebecers today, men and women, he, he's not fit. And so I, I wish that Premier Couillard comes to that conclusion. Uh, we only have a year and a half to go before the next election. I mean, independent MNA Sklavunos could hold on to his seat as an independent. And then if I were the leader of his party, I would tell him that I, will, I do not want him to be a candidate next year. Someone more fit uh, can be chosen by the Liberal Party. So then obviously, in your view, this is more than just a strictly legal question, because under the law, no criminal act was committed. That is right. No criminal act. And so this is not on the table anymore and should not be put into the discussion. What is put on the discussion is all the testimonies that the media uh, brought to life in the last few months of repetitive, inappropriate behavior of Mr. Sklavunos towards female staff. Right? This is what we have in front of us. And uh, so a political leader has to decide, do I want such a person to represent my party or not? And I think the answer should be not. On another topic, you've been making an effort to reach out to the Anglophone community. You've often said that the Liberals take the Anglophone community for granted. Premier Cuyal announced today that there will be an Anglo liaison officer, Mr. Gregory Kelly. What do you think of that? And do you have an issue with the fact that it's Jeffrey Kelly's son? Well, I love Jeffrey Kelly. I mean, uh, he's, uh, he's good for the job, but he's liaison agent. Why is it so difficult? to say that the most important minority in Quebec, the Anglo community, uh, merits a minister. Why is it so tough? I mean, the PQ did it. It's not as though they don't have political cover. You know, I was the PQ minister for the Anglo community. And I just don't understand uh, this unwillingness uh, of Mr. Cuyau to go the distance, uh, to go the distance towards real respect, to say, we have a minister for uh, for First Nations, we have a minister for women. Why can't we have a minister for the most important minority community in Quebec, one that built Quebec, is part of our dynamism today, and will be part of our future, and that has special needs? Merci. I don't get it. Merci. Monsieur X, CBC. Hello. Uh, a question for you and Madame Malte. Um, because you, you were talking about the words, being careful about the words that are used, and you admitted to uh, regretting some words that you've used. Um, and in the fall, Madame Malte talked about refusing to be served by someone wearing a visible religious sign during the Projet de loi 62. And I just wanted to know if you think today that, that kind of, those kinds of comments contribute to tolerance and the vivre ensemble. Well, and Madame Malte, if you also... Well, that's, my, that's my guess to, uh, I guess to go first, and yeah. I'll be back. Yes, uh, maybe these words have been uh, considered like uh, being hard, okay? And I can, I can accept that. But what I was talking about was the, the malaise that I have as a gay woman in front of all religions, all religions. And uh, homosexuality is not really... Uh, 
well accepted by all religions. So that's what I was talking about. If somebody has felt bad about these words, I'm sorry. But that I was talking about an historic fact and a personal uh, malaise. Mais, maintenant, uh, selon le context actuel, est-ce que vous diriez la même chose sur la place publique? Non. Étant donné que euh, c'était dans les, en ce moment-ci, non, je ne le redirai pas. J'y ai repensé. J'ai fait, ah, effectivement, peut-être que uh, some people have been uh, disturbed by this word. Uh, like I've been disturbed by gestures of religion. But okay. I won't say that. Okay. Um, Mr. Lise, I just wanted to know in general what kinds of discussions, what kinds of reflections you've had with your caucus about moving forward in terms of the tone of the debate over identity and values, that kind of thing. Well, we had, uh, we had a long discussion last fall. We had discussions again last week. Uh, we're going to touch on it uh, again this week. Uh, clearly, we feel that uh, there is merit to the proposals that are made to have a more secular Quebec. There is merit to that. And the Premier himself is proposing a law that would ban uh, some form of religious vestment in the civil service. That's the crux of his proposal. Uh, so even he believes there's merit to that. And a full veil is a strong statement. We're talking about strong words, written or spoken, Having a full veil is a very strong statement, and it is up for debate. And so it's only the way we approach the debate, and it would be foolish and, um, and uh, counterproductive to say that we cannot discuss these issues. We should. Et il va vraiment falloir y aller pour la dernière question si on veut être à temps au salon. Madame Fletcher. Good afternoon. Um, is it so important to stop the debate and the rhetoric around Bill 62 because you felt like that was um, sort of leading into uh, Islamophobic attitudes or spiraling out of control? There seems to be a, a consensus now that the debate needs to come to an end. Well, the debate needs to be appeased, but the debate has merit and we should stop dragging our feet into making a decision. Uh, the worst possible thing, and that's what the, Mr. Bouchard and Taylor said in the interviews in the last few days, uh, one of the big mistakes was not to act for the last 10 years and keep everyone in limbo about what are the rules. And this is disquieting for everyone. So yes, we have a, a, an opportunity to meet, I mean, the, the Liberal Party, the CAC, and us, and Quebec Solidaire, there is an opportunity to, to, to join into a single bill before the end of this session uh, to make an important step forward. Now, the tone of the debate, uh, I, I, I expect Mr. Cuyal to stop saying that if we disagree with him, we're intolerant. That's a, that's a good sign. He hasn't said that in a few days, and I, I salute him for that. Uh, I thought Mr. Uh, Kadzia was off the mark of appeasement yesterday by saying that there's systemic racism in the Premier's office. I think he had facts there that warranted criticism, but I think the use of this term uh, is not conducive to an appeased debate. Um, so in saying that, what are you asking for? You, you said a, um, a meeting point mm -hmm. in French. In English, can you explain what that meeting point would be on Bill 62? Well, already in Bill, uh, there are three items. Uh, already in Bill 62, there is uh, uh, a, a framework uh, on uh, religious accommodations uh, that, uh, for instance, uh, there's a line that cannot be crossed about equality of men and women. That's already there. Uh, we want them to go further in that into giving schools and hospitals a guide to how to answer requests so that, there's no, that they know where to go, what to say yes to, what to say no to. So that's one thing. I think it's pretty easy to get there. The second thing is the proposal to uh, impede full veil uh, for members of the public sector and citizens who get services. Uh, you the problem, yeah, full veil. The, the 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 problem with the wording is that the exception in the bill was greater than the rule. So the premier pledged to correct that. 
So we're waiting for uh, the wording. And the third thing is that the consensus is in Quebec about Bouchard-Tiller, which is religious, and I had any conviction sign for judges, uh, prison guards, and policemen uh, should, should be in. So we're asking the Premier to put that in, and we would, if we have these three elements, we will vote for it, and this morning we learned that the CAC would vote for it. Yesterday we learned that Quebec Solidaire wanted to have Bouchard-Tiller in, uh, and so it's an opportunity that we haven't had in 10 years to just go to the heart of the, the issue, do these things, appease the debate, and then if others, well, like we do, and others want to propose to further steps, well, there's going to be an election next year, and we can debate it there. I just one, last, one last question, if I may. Désolé, Raquel, il faut vraiment y aller. Le bleu commence en deux minutes. Ah, excusez-moi. Okay. Le président de l'Assemblée.